Uh, I did manage to stay busy during the pandemic. Um, I did a movie from, um, from my living room. Yeah, and it wasn't even on Pornhub. <laughs> the movie already came out in theaters. It's called Space Jam. It's the movie with LeBron. Los Angeles, you are looking at the new voice of Speedy Gonzalez. Thank you. I found it ironic that they hired the slowest Mexican <laughs> to play the fastest. You know? And two weeks after I get this part, uh, I come to find out that they're trying to cancel Speedy Gonzalez. I'm sure some of you heard that they came after two cartoons. They came after Pepe Le Pew and Speedy. Now, Pepe, I understand. <laughs> He's a little tachy. You know, but he, he, he disguises it with the Oh, 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 But Speedy Gonzalez, what's his crime? He's Mexican and he's fast. That is not a crime. And Montebello, that's called job security. <laughs> so I said, I cannot let them hurt Speedy. You know, I can't let them cancel him. So I came to his defense. Plus, it was my only job. I went to the only place I felt I could go to protect him. I went on Twitter. <laughs> and Twitter, ooh, Twitter's a scary place. It is. Uh, you only go there to fight, to get into it, to prove a point. And so a friend of mine said, if you want to get some attention, use a hashtag. And so I did. And I wrote a tweet that said, hey, hashtag cancel culture. My name is Gabriel Iglesias, and I'm the new voice of Speedy Gonzalez. You cannot cancel or catch me. <laughs> and I posted it. I had no idea that when you go on Twitter looking for problems, you will find them. <laughs> oh yeah, every major news outlet picked up my tweet and used it in a story about cancel culture. ABC, NBC, CBS, CNN. If I would have known that, I would have used spell check. Because my family called. Eres pendejo, que chingado, que te pasa? No escribe bien. Oh my God. Even Fox News did a story with my tweet. Fox News. You know how I know? My bus driver Dave called me. <laughs> oh, he was thrilled. He was like, Fluffy, God damn it, I've never been prouder. <laughs> you made it, baby. You're on Fox News. I said, Dave, shut up. You're stupid. He's like, <laughs> America. Even Warner Brothers Pictures reached out to say thank you, and before I know it, I was on a Zoom call. And I know a lot of us had to get used to Zoom, and it's kind of convenient, right? All they see is this. So to entertain myself, every time I took a Zoom call, I was full Winnie the Pooh. <laughs> and if you're not laughing right now, you better ask someone who is, because <laughs> there is no coming back from full Winnie the Pooh. I was leaving baby powder all over the house. It looked like an episode of Narcos. <laughs> so I get on this Zoom call with the director, writer, and producer of Space Jam. And they're being super nice, super supportive, super cool. They're like, Gabriel, thank you so much for lending your voice talents to our film. Uh, we, we really, really appreciate you being part of this. If you have any questions or concerns, let us know. So well, thank you. We have a question for you. I said, okay, how do you feel about the voice of Speedy Gonzalez? I said, well, what do you mean? Well, you know, some people find him to be a little stereotypical. What are your thoughts? I said, well, you have not met my family. <laughs> I cannot speak for all brown people, but I can tell you that me personally, in my house growing up, Speedy Gonzalez was not viewed in a negative way. As a matter of fact, he was the only form of representation we had growing up. It was him and the little bumblebee on The Simpsons. <laughs> Gabriel, we were thinking that perhaps you would like to lend your real speaking voice to the character, maybe modernize him a little, you know, bring him up to speed. I said, well, you know, with all due respect, I appreciate the fact that you would give me the power to change the sound of such an iconic character, 
But at the end of the day, when people see the movie, I don't want them to think of me. I want them to think of Speedy Gonzalez. So I said, please keep his voice original. And then he asked the question, well, do you think you can do the voice? How did I get the part? <laughs> now remember, I never auditioned for Speedy Gonzalez. They just called me, and I assumed that they knew that I did voices for a living and that I could pull this off. So I said, what made you choose me if you didn't know whether or not I could do the... Oh. <laughs> you needed a big brown shield in case shit happened, huh? <laughs> and then all three people on the phone call were like, I said, well, don't worry, because with me, you get a twofer. You get an actual Mexican, and you get someone that can nail the voice. So, oh yeah. That's right. So before I know it, this sound person, the guy who does recordings over at Warner Brothers, gets on the call. The only thing I know about this guy is that he's loud, okay? He gets on the call, he's like, Gabriel Iglesias, how are you? Wow, wow. How's it going? My name is Steven. I'm the sound coordinator here at Warner Brothers Pictures. So listen, buddy, here's what's going to happen. Basically, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit record. And as soon as I hit record, I just need for you to start talking like Speedy Gonzalez. We're going to get the flow, the tempo, the timing. And as soon as we got it dialed in, we're going to make a movie. Sound good? Sounds good. All right, this is Gabriel Iglesias for Space Jam, A New Legacy, Speedy Gonzalez, take one. Gabriel, mic check, one, two, three. One, two, three. Sounds good. All right, here we go. And go. All right, here we go. <clears throat> Hola, amigos. I am Speedy Gonzalez de Paz is Mouse in Old Mexico. Arriba! Epa, pandale! The director, writer, and producer, all three were like, That was perfect. I said, I know. I've been Mexican a long time. Do you think your mom would like to meet Vicente Fernandez right now? I said, Emily, let me tell you something. If she says no, I want to meet him. I'll be right back. Ama, dime, mijo. Emily wants to know if you would like to meet Vicente Fernandez right now. Mijo, that sounds nice. <laughs> All right, Emily, she's in. Emily goes, is she even a fan? I go, trust me, that's her reaction. She's good. She has the whole house covered with Vicente Fernandez records and cassettes. Okay, we're good. So Emily comes back and she puts these special VIP bracelets on us with a little click and she walks us through a door into the backstage area. As soon as we went through the door, I knew exactly where we were. I was just there a week ago. So I got my mom arm in arm and we're walking down the hallway, okay? Come on, let's go, let's go. We're walking down the hallway and we're getting closer and closer to Vicente Fernandez's dressing room. The door is wide open and I can hear a commotion coming out of the dressing room. And then a man and a woman exit the room and the man is holding onto the woman's shoulders and he's like, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay. And the woman looks destroyed, okay? Mascara's running down her face. My mom sees that. And she's like, mijo, did you see that? Did you see what the mascara, eh, 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 what the mascara parece puta la cabrona. Sorry, puta means friendly. <laughs> so we get by the door and the closer we get, we start to see a guy in the room that he comes to the door. Um, in the room, there's three people, okay? There's Vicente Fernandez, the photographer, and a handler. The handler comes to the door, and you can tell by his voice that he works for like a Mexican radio station because he's got that voice. You know, like, hola, hola, pasale, pasale. Pasale in Spanish means come on in. 
So we start to walk into the room. And let me tell you guys something. If you grew up listening to Vicente Fernandez from a young age and you get the opportunity to meet him, it is seriously a religious experience. <laughs> My mom and I are entering the room. The only thing missing is the freaking. <laughs> you don't look at him, you look at the floor. <laughs> Out of respect, you just look at the floor. Come on, Ma. We get all the way up to him and I see boots. And when I see the boots, my mom and I both just... <laughs> he knows what you're doing. He knows you're checking him out. So what he does is he poses, okay? Vicente stands there and he poses. He'll have the sombrero, the hat, to his side. And then he doesn't look at you. He looks away. <laughs> and he sticks his chest out. And he stands there looking like a big-ass bottle of Tapatio at Costco. And then he looked at me and he recognized me, not as a comedian, but because I was there the week before and my photo was hanging outside his door. It, it's whoever's there last, you know, they always rotate the photo. So he sees me and he's like, I go, yeah, that's me outside, yeah. Hola. <laughs> oh, um, Vicente, Vicente, I'm sorry. Um, Le presento mi mamá. I'm like, oh my God, I think I just offered up my mom to Vicente Fernandez. <laughs> She's like 73, better late than never, ma, get him. <laughs> my mom starts walking up to Vicente. He was so nice. He goes out to shake my mom's hand and my mom grabs his hand and I don't know where she got this strength and energy from, but she grabbed him and pulled him in hard, like the video game, get over here, and then hooked him. She hooked him and she starts screaming into his chest, mi chente, mi chente, mi chente. I'm like, oh my God, she's getting horny. And he knew too. Because he was like, you know, quítamela, quítamela. The photographer, the handler, and me, the three of us, is what it took to pull her off of Vicente. We sit her down, she's bawling. Ah! Mascara's running down her face. The photographer shaking his head. I guess. Vicente had dinner earlier that night. He was eating barbecue because I had those wet naps, you know, barbecue wet naps. And so we take the wet naps and we start cleaning the mascara of my mom's face. And we stand her up and we posed her and we took the picture. Emily comes over and she, she takes us and she escorts us to our seats in the front. And for three hours, for three hours, my mom was on her feet listening to his, she refused to sit down. Mom, you should say, no, como que, es el gente. <laughs> Holding a shot of tequila that she never drank. <laughs> she just, she was, three hours on her feet, never once sat down. That's how powerful his music was. <laughs> My mom felt no pain for that entire time. And the minute that freaking concert was over, you know, dun, 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 dun. my feet! Oh my God, amigo, mis pies! Ay, pinche callo! Oh my God, my feet! Ay! And I'm like, oh great, so now I gotta drag this living novella to the parking lot. I helped her into the car, my feet! I told you to sit down, you don't sit for chente. <laughs> Here comes Emily. Did you guys have a good time? I go, Emily, Emily, we had the greatest time. Thank you so much. I got something for you. I go, what's up? And she hands me an envelope, and I open it. And inside the envelope is the picture. She printed it out for me. And when I looked at it, I got so choked up because I have never seen my mom so happy in a picture. 
And it's not that she wouldn't smile. She would smile, but it was that, you know, one, two, three, cheese. <laughs> but this one was like... <laughs> and what makes it extra special is that is the last photo I have of my mom, and she was the happiest. And I know that that moment wouldn't be possible if I did not do this for a living. So thank you for that. Uh, sorry, I know a lot of people are like, we came to laugh, we're getting all things, pinche gorda, me said, thank you, chillando. Three years ago, I bought a beetle, not even thinking. That's not the joke, shut up. See, I can't even tell you guys the story already. <laughs> I wasn't thinking. I bought the car because it was affordable, economical, brand new freaking Beetle for like 17 grand. I was like, ah, first new car. I go to show it off at my friend Martin's house. I thought it was nice. I pull up, you know. Martin! He lives in the hood. I don't get out the car. Across the street, there are these gang members. They're kind of gang members. They don't really get into, you know, like shooting people and stuff like that. They just hang out on the porch and talk a lot of smack. And so I'm there in a beetle and across the street I hear this, right? I'm like, Martin! And over here I hear, Orale! <laughs> hey, what's up guys? How's it going? How'd you get in there, is it? <laughs> Two months later, I go back to pick him up. Now I've had some time to work on the car, right? I put some rims on it, some stickers. I put a chip in the motor so it goes faster. I thought it was bad, right? I pull up. <laughs> Martin! Orale! Uh-uh, I'm not turning around. Hey! Mm -mm. Hey! I don't see you. I didn't even wait, man. I just... <laughs> got rid of that car, man. I traded it in and got myself a big old SUV. Oh, nice for a while. This car freaking sucked on mileage, so man, I got 11 miles to the gallon. Yeah. Oh, you cannot be badass in a car that kills gas like I kill tacos. You can't. <laughs> you can't be at the stoplight trying to intimidate other cars. You know what? Whoa, whoa, whoa! <laughs> 20 bucks right there. <laughs> Hell no, man. But it was kind of cool. It had a GPS navigational system in it, an OnStar, which was really cool. You know, I'm driving, and all of a sudden, this girl's talking to me. <laughs> right turn at the head. <laughs> In three-quarter tenths of a mile, left turn. And I'm like, whatever you say, baby. 